problems with uh, scheduling, and, and Omnic had a stroke some years ago. One of the reasons that they lowered her vibration to the fifth dimensional plane, to the physical plane, they wanted to see how she would fare on third dimensional Earth. When I first read about her, it was she had done a Chicago, she was working uh, uh, at a nightclub where they were partying in the 80s, and her and Toby were the hat check girls. And uh, they were the famous, she had, you know, said she was a Venusian and, and all that stuff. So um, I heard that, that thing, and then uh, Wendell Stevens' book came out, and I was like, I really said, I said, that something just keep me in on this. And I actually have a past life relationship with her. Uh, during Christ's time, she was the one who um, told me about Christ. And they said that um, I was one of the first Roman soldiers to take the story to Germany. I had met, um, I was a Roman soldier. I guess I had faith in this message. And they said that I came up and I asked him to heal my daughter, or a, I think it was a servant or something. And, he's, and he said, he said, I'll come with you right away. And I, and I said, no, if you speak the word, I know that my servant will be healed. And, and he said, as you have uh, wished it, it is done. And I turned and left. He turned to the disciples and says, this guy has more faith than you. So Peter was, you know, Raymond wrote the Gospel of Thomas. And while she's coming a little late, I'll just tell these stories that kind of relate to this. So how many of you know how Raymond wrote the Gospel of Thomas? He was given the breastplate of Aaron. How many of you know about the uh, Book of Mormon? The Book of Mormon was given as a, a gift to mankind of the Latter-day Saints through the Akashic Records. In 1820 or 30, uh, when Joseph Smith was around, he was a young boy of about 20, and an angel appeared in his bed and said, you like to grow, and he goes, he says, hey, you got to go out and look in your yard. There's some important plates out there, and um, you're going to go and dig them up, and I'll give you more instructions later. Go out. It's by the tree. 20 paces to the right is a rock. Go north by northwest and dig. And he was like, oh, it's like, I was like, well, was that a dream? It was ever. He kind of went out and looked around and goes, oh. a little bit later, the, the angel comes and goes, hey, you got to get out there and do it. You know, they tried in this day and age, you can be scrolling and going, on Instagram, go away, right? And so he appeared the third time and he goes, hello, Joseph. Get up, go to the tree, the rock, 20 paces to your left. You know, face toward the oak, whatever the directions where he finally dug in the location, he found a big box. And in those box were metal plates made of gold. And these were the records from Adam and Eve with uh, uh, the K line, which is the more negative line that was a part of the uh, Enlil Enki reptilian agenda and the fallen angels that actually controlled the earth. So I had to keep it secret, but Raymond was given the same glasses that Joseph Smith had. But Joseph Smith found these goggles. He found two crystals. They're called the Urim and the Thummim, or the seer and the interpreter. And the seer allowed him to look into the past, and the interpreter was tuned into his personal frequency. And they had modified it for Joseph Smith. He wore the crystals around his neck, but he had a pair of glasses. He could go into the Akashic records in a bilocation signal and look into the past and see who was talking, what they meant, what the information was. He could interpret anything. Same thing happened with Aaron, Moses' uh, son. He would wear the breastplate and he would stand with tents around, stand in front of the ark, and the message the priest would ask a question, and the pillar of fire and spaceship that guided Moses out of the desert with the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day, followed them around and led them and they would make an encampment. And in the morning, the angel's hair or mana would feed them. So Raymond was given this wonderful thing. Here comes the lovely Omnek and Anya. They're going to be doing a, a, a presentation here in just a moment. Omnek will be uh, getting settled here. We'll do a sound check and we'll let them begin. So Raymond was able to look into the past and see Christ. He chose the Gospel of Thomas. And in that Gospel of Thomas, we found out that 
he, Jesus had a twin brother born at the same time, and he had three children. He, Mary was uh, pregnant. In order to be called rabbi, which he was, you had to have be married with children. And I asked Alon, I said, why did they take the divine feminine and the importance of Mary out of the Bible? And he said, because the church wanted a, he, he said in the 15 Latern Council in 1139, that they wanted to control all the property of the churches, and they wanted the priests to, to, to will their property to the church so they would be the biggest landowners in the world, which they are. And so the priests were rebelling, and especially Martin Luther. He was a king in Germany. He said, I ain't giving you that. He was probably the reincarnation of Christ, even. He was a great reformer. So, so can we get some water up here for Omnic? I'd like a nice, fresh glass of water. Uh, she's going to be available here for signing books. She may pop outside for a quick, quick smoke afterwards. She breaks a lot of what you would think are rules, but she can answer these questions for you. It's interesting, her answers about about uh, the dark side and why she eats meat and what the angels and everything she knows, she retains her memory. As we're getting ready here, I'm going to finish up with the fact that I said a lot. I said, so we lost the divine feminine to a Vatican land grab. I'm surprised that, that Jesus had a twin brother. I never really heard that. But Joseph of Arimathea took her to France. Then they went to Glastonbury, England, and that's where Raymond and I will be doing the gospel. So... I want you to mel welcome my little Venusian friend. We had some time here, so tonight she's going to be here, full steam, ready to go. And uh, where's your where's your son, Jason? Oh, he, so her son will be here uh, tomorrow for her presentation, and her other son will also be here, Xandar. So there's beautiful books here that you can purchase afterwards, and she'll sign them. And um, so you understand. Um, Omnic is uh, a beautiful soul, and I want to thank you for coming here again, sweetheart, and coming. She's had a stroke, and as I had told you, they used to heal her. She, I said, Omnic, I said, uh, uh, what happened? She goes, well, I said, I said, are you supposed to smoke? She goes, it's not recommended, but I like it. And I said, uh, and you have a little drink? She goes, yeah, it's not recommended, but I like it. So they took her up, and, and they looked over her body in one of the seven years, and, and, and she goes, well, aren't you going to do the healing on me? And what did they tell you? She, she said, they said, you have to experience the consequences of your own actions. So even this, this beautiful ascended being, um, with certain rules with your help. Well, let's get this party started. Yeah. <laughs> I am slow and brave. It's also slow and we, we didn't even finish our dinner. We boxed it up and brought both of it with us, but we did the best we could. And I, I told Rob I had a blueberry margarita. <laughs> I just wanted to taste it. I don't have to drink the whole thing, but a couple of sips, then I see what it tastes like. I never had one before. I never heard of a blueberry margarita. I have the salt ones usually. And when I told Rob, he said, oh, don't be drinking. It's not good before you speak. I said, Rob, I didn't get drunk. I just had a few sips. And that's true. But if I'm on my own, I may have a glass of wine or a shot of brandy because it relaxes you. It makes you feel like you can talk without being all wound up. And a lot of people do that to relax. Everybody has their own way. And whatever it is, it's all right. We have to learn to let each other be and us just to be. And not judge and criticize. You got to put a replace of judgment with acceptance and criticizing people with love. That's it. It's all you need. If you can do those two things, your life will be much simpler because you won't be aggressive, you won't be angry, you won't be cursing and beeping the horn. You know, people hurry too much. They're in a hurry all the time. And they're trying, everything is there. Even the computers and their phones have to act, react like that. If it doesn't, they're, they're mad. Why don't you work? What's wrong with you? You're punching buttons. 
A machine is like us too, it needs rest. And you can't stay on it from the morning when you get up to night and not expect it to flip out. <laughs> Isn't that true? Because electricity and all the chips and everything that goes into the computer is living things. They're made from minerals and different elements on earth and everything, a stone, a crystal, and the minerals in our food and water, all is alive. The same soul that we have, that's what exists in, in the everything. And if any animal, any insect, you can talk to them, communicate with them, say, okay, I've been seated with him on me yesterday, and he sat on my leg, and I was talking to him. I said, now, I'm glad you're here. I'm, I know you may need the information, like anything else, but you've got to make me a deal. I'll make a deal with you. This is our environment and our space, and it's sacred to us. If you come in the house, you can fly around and observe, but don't fight in the my the group because we're all spiritual people. We're not going to hurt you. And you really got to communicate with everything because you can clear your house of insects that way by talking to them and asking them not to invade your space. Would they please evacuate and leave outside? And if they don't, they're going to have to be killed. <laughs> And they have to expect this. Mosquitoes don't expect to live to 90 years old. <laughs> and if you kill one on your arm, I bet you say, bless you. <laughs> and they take off to where they have to go. <laughs> anyway, I want to talk about the transformation process, which we're in the middle of. A lot of people have misconceptions at misunderstanding because there are so many people that have been chosen to give this information on many different levels, many different authors, many different spiritual people, but each one has a particular part of that, of sending the message. So you can't say that someone stole someone's copyright or copied their book because they spoke about this before eight people heard of it. Because we all were asked to do our part as, as missions to spread the word. And, and I'm one of the messengers. And that's all. I don't have no other title. I'm not commanders. I'm not princess. I'm not ambassadors. I am a messenger. And I'm most of all on there. <laughs> and I want to be me. I don't want to be on the pedestal. I don't want to be worshipped. I don't want people to be afraid to come around me. I'm here for anyone. I will speak and talk to anybody, anytime. And if I'm out there smoking, well, you can join me if you smoke. And if you don't, if you can tolerate the smoke, you can kneel down beside me and talk. But if it bothers you, I feel bad because I love you very much. I don't want you to feel isolated. I feel isolated because I smoke. Everybody should be. They don't like it. And, and you, they criticize and they scold you. And they, they don't just say, can you smoke somewhere else? They, they go into a whole thing about what it does to your health. And it's not good for you. And it's like they're trying to tell me how I should do or what I should do. And my God, I know all the whole thing about it. It's bad for you. The doctors have told me. But even if it's bad for me, I'm able to do it if I want to. And because I know that I limit myself so it doesn't have control over me. If I go out shopping and to the doctors and everywhere, I always leave my cigarettes at home. I don't smoke in the car or I don't make her stop and let me go smoke. I just, I don't need it. I just enjoy it. And I limit myself because that's what you should do. I say, I can have four cigarettes today. That's it. I tell myself, and I, I, I comply. If I mess up and smoke too much, then I'm the only human. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I know. I came here to be with you, and I'm totally human. I had a stroke, and all this, this body and the problems is because a lot of people have that problem. A lot of people are getting old, and you can't pretend you're not old because your children are getting their fifties. It's too late to lie about it. <laughs> when I was, uh, I think, forty. I learned how my kids were, and I said, well, don't say that around me, because I'm your mother. <laughs> Nobody wants to get old, but it's part of our life cycle. And you shouldn't fear death, because you shouldn't fear anything, because anything that happens to you, you have chosen before this lifetime, and only you are responsible for what happens to you. If you suffer, you get cancer, can't blame God, you can't blame your mother. You got to realize you chose this before you entered your life cycle. And it could be based on karma with certain people. It could be a lot of things, but it's just the fact that before you're born, you are showed your whole life in sequences, your different lives. And along the way, gradually, your consciousness is getting higher and higher because you've been here longer and you can focus on things other than just surviving or being in war. But you've been there. You've been there and done it. And you don't leave it. And so it's important to realize that if you're ill, people take care of you. They love you. And people are so helpful because they know it could be them one day. And we all have to say, this is how I look, because <laughs> I'm, I'm getting older. And I, it's to have it, getting older is problems, because your physical body has certain changes, and you may get arthritis and different problems. You can't function as well as, or see as well as you used to, but that's part of being a person, and it's quite natural. So relax and be happy, whatever you are. And learn how to just be you and not try to tell others what they, what are, they should or should not do. If they decide to do something, that's, that's their right. Everybody has the right to live their lives, and make their choices. And I would never say, just follow what I teach and do what I say, because that's a cult. That's when you try to control everybody. And I give you restrictions, you know. If you're going to belong to this group, you can't do this, you can't do it. And the list is so long, you're wondering what you can do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, I should ask him, what can I do? <laughs> and I usually, I don't want to belong to that organization. I love their spiritual message. Every message from every religion is a stair step on your way to learning. And... It's helpful. They serve a purpose, and people sometimes need restrictions, and they're very happy with it. But that's for them. So then you find something for you. You search until you do. And when something resonates with what you're saying, what you think, and someone who's talking answers a question you've had inside for a long time, then it just confirms that this is for you and this is the truth. And I, I don't write down my speeches or I don't, uh, I have nothing written down. It's all in here. Everything is what I know and have experienced, not what I think or remember. Because remembering, it, it can go either way. It's, un, it's like undecisive. And if you say, I think so, that's the same thing. It's like, you have to know. You have to absolutely know what you have experienced. And don't talk about things that you don't experience because it's the latest, jazziest thing. <laughs> Speak about stuff from your heart, your soul, and you will be fine. I love you. I'm going to start my real message now. <laughs> that was the, just a short... For only for you, okay? And Anya is gonna do a commercial for me right now. <laughs> Please.
please be patient. We meant to do this several days and we get forgiven, but she's going to tell you something that's a little bit important. And also, well, she knows what she's going to say. <laughs> I've been forgetting it every day. Everything. Then we give it over. Then we give it over. Well, there's a little break here, folks. Uh, we do have, we found some phones. Uh, I have a phone at my uh, at my station. I also we found a phone from the other lodge, and we have some water things. So if you know anyone, that might be good. Stuff. If you if you have any, uh, you know anyone says, oh, I lost my phone. Every bottle lost and found is at my booth. We have a couple mm -hmm. nice. Water bottles, I always get a couple of new water bottles every day. <laughs> I lost my water bottle in my Okay, I, I have one of them in my car. If, if you don't claim it, Rob gets it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you know anyone who lost a phone or had my food? We also have uh, some water bottles. Oh, and Rob? Rob? Yes, sir. Remember? Yes, sir. <laughs> You're as nuts as I am. Uh, anyway, you remember what you did when I came in the first day? I hugged you and kissed you. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, no. Well, you kissed me and hugged me first, but then I was sitting there and I was sending people to search for my ring. And I found a ring. I just, someone came up to me before and said, I found this ring in the bathroom. And Toby had bought her a new ring. She had lost the ring before she came. All of a sudden, they came off. They hadn't come off in years, and it came off. And that night, Uncle Odin came in and gave her a healing, it allowed her to work her arm. She doesn't need to use it to walk quite so much. And uh, and uh, Toby bought her a new ring because it got squished. And so uh, she lost her ring here the other day, and I found her ring for her just like that. Yeah, I thought it was magic because I had four or five people searching down the aisles on the chair <laughs> all the way back to the car, in the car, yeah. and they couldn't find it. And they said, sorry. And then Rob came over and said, have you been looking for this? I said, oh, my God. Lord. I thought he just uh, materialized it in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you have abilities. You don't know. I, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, honey. I'm just going to uh, uh, augment, and uh, we're going to work together. Uh, and look how cute we're going to look at the machine. What is that? She's so cute. Yeah. You are a, a, a boy bag. Among other things. Yes, I didn't know. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, so. Um, we prepared a couple of things actually. Um, we are probably not making our way through everything. Um, yesterday, for example, we wanted to share a special Omniconic presentation with uh, videos and everything. So um, it doesn't matter. But now that Omnic said I'm going to do a little commercial, okay, she wants me to. <laughs> um, because these are all things that are important to us. and. Uh, I'm very glad, grateful that I have now the chance to share a few of these things with you because, you know, Omnic and I, we are usually, especially always, and we never had a hard work. And asking ever. rarely for help. But in this case, now I have to make it public because this book is an unauthorized publication. And many, many people buy this constantly since 12 years. And I think it's my book. It's, it's 12 years already it's, since it has been published on Amazon. And it's just not fair because it is not that this publisher ever had the rights to do it. And Omni never Thank received you. any dollar, no dollar, nothing. So they never contacted us. And now, you know, the story is, of course, a little bit bigger. There's... Uh, there really was a, a different publisher 
in between, between 2010 and now, Omnix writes were really at a different publishing house. So during these years, uh, this is where the, the Venusian trilogy was published. And now going after this slide, I also want to talk about the trilogy for a moment before we go later on again and in deeper into the transformation information. So we have really lots of stuff to share, but these are now the little details where we are just um, kind of um, asking for, for help uh, because maybe somebody has an idea or maybe somebody knows an attorney or if some idea pops up later on, please just contact us because what we want to achieve is uh, that this publisher, you know, this was Timothy Green Beckley uh, from Inner Light Publication. He published this book and he's deceased a couple of years ago. So the, the book yet yeah, is still on sale, of course. So the money must go somewhere. The money has gone since 12 years somewhere yes, and it's still going somewhere. And what we would like to achieve is uh, that Omnic gets somehow and uh, she has to get at least a compensation for all these 12 years, whatever it is, you know, at least something. something so we, we need a legal help. And, and it has to be taken out of Amazon. So this is what, this is our goal. Well, and anybody has any, uh, sorry, how do you know which contact? Uh, any information. Uh, well, the contact. Well, I'm, I'm the, I'm, we are the pub, I'm the publisher now, and we are the owner of the rights. So we are the legal. Uh, we have the legal. Um, nah, the legal everything. You know, we are the legal ones. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you have any, if you want to get a hold of Omnic, if you're thinking of it now, but if something comes to you later, yes, and you're exactly. Thinking, if you can contact Anya, contact me. Um, and I will forward you on to Gavin. Yeah, if you know a Gavin is, Gavin is a legal people. Uh, oh, good. That's what we need, it's in the legal field. And uh, the other thing is what I would like to also share with you is, so this is the Venusian Trilogy. I think many of you, might, some of you might have it. Rob had it on sale. It was published in shop. In Germany. And it was this is the book that was published in 2010 through our German contact, also in, in Europe. It, it was not me because I was not in charge at that time, but I organized. No, she was with this me when I had a stroke and I met that man. Exactly. And so a contract was concluded with a different publisher and uh, she made it. I, I mean, I was the one who did the layout and everything. and. And the book was published uh, actually in Europe, in German and in English. This is the Venusian Trilogy. And now the rights are returned to us. And the thing is that we had to purchase the whole rest of the material that's still on stock so that I could republish. And these books here are the new ones, the ones that I knew newly published because I... Um, I split the three parts again into three different books, and now I republish them. And they're not as heavy. <laughs> exactly, they're not as heavy. But the trilogy now, we had to purchase the leftover 900 copies so that they would return the rights to us. This was the, uh, the demand, their the requirement. The only way I can get my copyrights. Exactly. Back. And we had a generous sponsoring, so a person all of a sudden showed up uh, like an angel and gave me the money. Um, all to, of it. All the money to purchase these books back from, from Liechtenstein, from that publisher. But now I'm sitting on 900 of these nine hundred of these trilogies, it must be incredible. Yeah. <laughs> we have a whole stock full of nine hundred Venusian trilogies in Europe, and they are so heavy. I don't sell any of them in Germany. They're hard Yeah, they're heavy. And they're so and, and the, so now the dream is, my vision is to find somebody in, in America who is interested in distributing these books here in your country and in, on this continent. But first of all, we have to ship this whole bunch per sea freight or whatever. I don't, I'm not interested in selling just 10 books. I'm interested in selling at least a hundred or five hundred or better all of them because I can't sell them in Germany. 
Nobody buys them. She needs to find someone who has room and can store them. And distribution. And, and mail them out to people. people. Yeah. Mail. So it's again something, I'm just sharing it. If somebody has an idea now or whenever in the future, please just contact me. Yeah? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And that's the end. That's the end <laughs> for now for this. Uh, yeah, that's not really a good commercial. Huh? Yeah, good. What's next? <laughs> I'm going to talk about my mission and the transformation. Okay, and I'll talk for 15 minutes and I may take a break, but it's going to be a long night because I'm in no hurry. <laughs> really, I'm not. Only when I'm exhausted and I need to rest and I, I can't stay as long as I'd love to. But I apologize to anybody who was disappointed last night. I thought it was pretty good. I didn't think it was. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think I cheated you. I didn't think. We did a mantra. I spoke for 30 minutes. You watched the video. And none of us wanted to sit there for hours. We're all tired. It was 12 hour days. And that's a lot of work for anybody, no matter what kind of job you have. It's just hard on the body, and you need to relax and rest and be fit for whatever you're going to do the next time. And you got to drink lots and lots of water. It's all part of the transformation. I'm going to tell you everything, okay? Okay. Well, you may write down or record this. It don't matter. It's not for sale anyway. <laughs> Are we ready? Are you all ready to pay attention? We're all okay. All right. You still feel relaxed from the meditation? Okay. I just start. This uh, transformation process was in the works for 100 years. All of the planets around us and the Masters on different levels and the hierarchy of the angel, everybody was working on having a transformation for the earth because it was going to be depleted and your planet was going to be ruined, and we don't want that because earth is unique. It is very special. I told you today, right? <laughs> She heard it all today in a private session. <laughs> she was lucky, and I was lucky to have her. Where's your friend? Oh, hi. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, they came for a private session. And we we want to do group sessions at the place where we live. If you would like to, I th we'll see how many people we can handle because I want to have group sessions on a donation basis because I don't like to charge people because maybe they can't afford it. And I would even talk to you for nothing. I, I talk to homeless people. I talk to people I meet, I don't even know, because they need the attention and acceptance. Mm -hmm. But above all, love and acceptance. Every human being don't want to be, feel like they're not accepted or not appreciated. And that hurts. And when you do it to each other you don't mean to, it still hurts because they feel that you didn't respect them, you know what I mean? But respecting is a thing in your society. And you don't demand respect. You ask for it. Okay, but the one who can suggest with what Omnic just said, what I suggest because Omnic just suggested this, is that uh, they speak tonight and determine how many people can go to a private session and when it will be. Omnic's last talk is on Saturday. Yeah. So I'm going to suggest that she schedule a, a session. A group session. A group session. Give us how many people and either and let us know and we will arrange for uh, everyone to uh, go out to her place on the designated time on Sunday. If you're going to charge for free, or it can be by donation, and she will set the time, and, and Anya and yeah. I will help facilitate 
the assignments. Yeah, we okay, have. so keep in touch. You decide the time. I Talk will. to Toby and let us know tomorrow. On your will. Yeah. And on your will, let me know. And we'll have a private session sometime at their Airbnb, not too far from here. Thank just, you. Just so you have a chance to come and have it, okay? And I think we have room for at least 20 people. Yeah, with the chairs and the benches that we got. Well, okay. You can talk about that before we end. <laughs> already did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We already planned the whole thing. We don't try to plan, and we want to do it spontaneously. And we have to go by who needs uh, a session. It's more of a social gathering, an exchange of love and messages, and tell me what you do. And me understanding and explaining what I do, if you have a question, I'll be glad to answer it. So that's why I wanted to have a group session. Is that okay? Yes. Perhaps even sign some people up tonight and then um, they can check in and we'll tell, you, tell them the time. Okay. okay. I, I need to make a list for your sign. Okay. okay. Yeah, so make a list. Did you bring those points in on you? The light bearer? Okay. I have a poem I wrote well, a long time ago, but it's called The Light Bearer, and we have copies for you with a beautiful picture of me, and it's pink. And yeah, that's it. And it's a wonderful poem. And it's free for everybody. Mm -hmm. And you can use it for a book also. <laughs> anyway. In 1999, this project that they were working on came into being for the first time. They informed me when I was in Peru doing a ceremony to welcome in the new year. Uh, people were, were supposed to go on Machu Picchu, but we had to stay at the base. And I was disappointed, of course. Everybody was. I had... 20 people in my group that were with me and asked that for the, we get a tour and we get uh, spiritual sessions and all that and get to express ourselves spiritually and have a little meeting and go see the magical sights. No, it was beautiful, but <laughs> I didn't like it when he said, we have to say, yeah, we're not allowed to go in. And I said, why not? He said, uh, a group was there yesterday and they were meditating and dancing, and a person fell off and got killed. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what I said. But they closed the whole thing up because they, they had to figure out a way to put barriers up without ruining the view, you know what I mean? So it took them a while. And so they, we accepted it, of course. But I said, okay, we're gonna set this picnic table at the base, and we're right where you can see we're at the top of it, and we're going to bring in the new year with monsters, meditation, and we will see spaceships. They'll do it just for us because we couldn't go up there. And I, being myself, went and searched all over the place in Peru to find a bottle of champagne. <laughs> I asked at restaurants, I asked at stores, finally a little guy who run like a hotel, he had one bottle and he was holding on to it. It was for the elite people who came there. And I said, and I can have it? He said, sure. And I was really happy. <laughs> I like to have champagne on the beers. <laughs> Just in glass or two. No, that's, a, that's what you call it, a tradition. It's an earth tradition. And I like it. I love champagne. Not too much, but I like it. I love mimosas. I love everything. But I got a bottle, chilled it, and then opened it and set it on the table. And my, my group stood up because half of them, not really half, but uh, a third of them, decided to go and listen to a shaman, a shaman for the New Year's and sit with him around the fire. And so I said, fine, who wants to go? And they raised their hands. I said, fine, because they really came and paid to be with me. 
And I didn't care. I said, go and enjoy yourself, and we will all do our thing, you know? And they went, and they were all sitting around the fire, chanting. I don't know. He was telling them some long thing, but I could only hear him in the background, see the fire from far away. But we used on my bench. I had two people from Switzerland, a man and wife, and four other people. And we were sitting there, and they told me we didn't want to go with Shannon because you know that if they take coca, they crush the leaves up in the cocaine. And they get people to eat it because you have to have that when you go, go, up and go into a high area for your balance and breathing. Then when they first went to get you cocoa leaves, a little bit, when you first arrive on, on the plateau, in the mountains, because you're really high up. And so instead of making people sick, it helps them. It helps with your body and your heart rate and everything. Because sometimes at high altitudes, people have different muscles for the heart and breathing and everything. So I was surprised I never heard that. And then, I found out that really it was the drugs they were taking. And I was praying that my group that went there didn't try that, you know? But I can't tell them that. I just have to ask them when I give them a chance. But we finished watching, we had it's ships coming. There's three different colors. And they were dancing on the sky. And they're going almost down to the ground. And you can see the shape of them. And you're flying back up. Was it wasn't on the ground, it was top of Machu Picchu. <laughs> but anyway, it was beautiful. We're all happy. We're meditating, having champagne. And then it got late, and we were going to go back to our tent because we were sleeping in tents. Everybody had a tent because we were in the jungle, and we hadn't arrived at the place with our motels and hotels. <laughs> and I never slept in a tent. I did once, but I did. I don't care for it. <laughs> and I was glad that this tent had a, a base instead of me being on the grass, you know. And I was so happy about that. At least we could lay down on our beds and not worry about bugs. <laughs> I don't like insects crawling on me when I, I'm sleeping. I just don't like them to crawl on me unless I know they're not going to harm me. And so we go, we go back to our tent and we pass by. Uh, the river is very dangerous river. It's so, uh, it's rapids, there's so many rapids and rocks in it that if you step into it, it will take you under. So you, uh, you're told, do not go too close to the river. And also, the water is muddy all the time. And I, I didn't know that, I was new there, but on the way to my tent, I found one of my people that came with me, with that, that group, she had fallen on her face while in the river. And I, I didn't know what to do. I, I was just so upset. I picked her up, she had mud all over her face, and she was out of her head on crumbs. She didn't know who she was or what was happening, and I, I didn't know how she got there. But at least I found a god in her. And if I hadn't, she could have been on the river and drowned. Because if you're on drugs, you're not in this reality. You're hallucinating. And God knows what that stuff does. Yeah. But I heard from her that he was singing and beating a drum and doing all the medicine and things. <laughs> it's a shame I does. And she said he fell on his coca. And then they don't remember anything else. He was making suggestions while they were in that state, like a brainwashing. And he was making uh, suggestions what they should do, how they should feel, and think. And they just all got confused. Because, of course, they're not expecting for us, they're spiritual people. And that's like making you take something against your will. I believe, anyway. It's like he said, if you're going to be in this group, you've got to take this. Not give them a choice. And I I just don't understand that. So when I was there and the ships came, I got the information. 
from our code and that I was to meet with the spiritual masters uh, to receive instructions. And he told me where and what to do. It was all going to take place in the soul body on the left convention. And I would receive all of the things I needed to do and special abilities to make it happen. And that was in 1999. Are you okay? <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited to hear about Odin's uh, spiritual teacher. <laughs> he, he, Uncle Odin's spiritual teacher is Rami Nuri. Rami Nuri. R I M I N U R I. And he's from Mars. So he has the Asian. Is he an Equinist, sir? Yes, of course. Yeah, so if you said the Equinist card, there's the teachings of the soul plates, the teachings of the Sikh religion, and the uh, uh, secret of the shop, and the inner sound card that leads you to God. And this is one of the Venusian uh, um, spiritual techniques of the soul level. So uh, what, what did Roman Neri teach you? Oh, he was my teacher on Venus when I was a child before I came to Earth. And he taught me English, believe it or not. Taught me all about Sheila and her family. So when I came, I was prepared. But I had to learn everything about me, human, because I was used to manifesting what I needed or wanted and not worrying about the material or together that was used to build something. But you have to, even if you're manifesting something, you got to know how much, how many meters or what feet long it is, you, and the materials. You got to manifest those just right. You can't just throw it together with your mind. It'll just be an image. You want a, a real house you can live in, and it's not physical. All of the material we use is absorbed from Venus, and we take it, visualize, we got what we want. It takes a while, and I have to meditate. And then, if you're hungry, and you feel need for the sustenance for the body, you don't have to eat. We absorb energy straight from that plant dimension. And so it's a lot different from here. And I was a little disappointed when I came. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not in the right place. <laughs> My uncle Odin, I did. Uh, in the temple on Retz. It's a city of Retz, I mean the capital, like a big area is called Retz. And within Retz is Teutonia, where I came from. And this is a, a city with a dome over it because it exists in the physical and in the astral. And that's where we can live there on the physical. And we don't, we're not harmed. It's our transition city. And he, I had to go there first. And then I had to go to the special temple, do a special meditation to manifest my physical body. And that's how I did it. But I had previously accompanied Shiva in the birth process to receive the genetic imprint to make me Shiva or look like it. That's how it happened. I know people get just like I'm gonna walk in. <laughs> they don't know. They they have so many methods of coming from the planets now. I get confused. I mean, they tell you I'm gonna walk in, and this time when they challenge stuff, and I sometimes I know that somehow they're in touch with their own energy, and I don't believe in channeling. Because those beings in the other dimensions, you they will convince you that they are Saint Germain, Christ, whatever, just to get the information through and use you. And it's very dangerous. And I was told never, never shall. And you know what? I'm saying everything I want to say while I'm here. When I'm gone, I don't want nobody to challenge. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel. And because 
I don't want someone to pretend to be me by saying they've channeled me. And it's terrible. And people open themselves up, their chakras and stuff. And that makes a place for an entity or someone on the war astral. And they have gods that try to hold you in that area. And they make you believe that they're God because of every concept of God is, they can be. And then they hinder you and keep you from advancing. So it's a lot more dangerous than people realize. You've got to know what you're doing. And you must have a guide. On the other dimensions, everyone had their own guide. Everyone has their own angel. Everyone has their own protector. Because they're assigned to you. You, when you come into the physical life for your protection and help. I and mean, I even have a parking <laughs> angel. <laughs> We're trying to find a place to park. We ask our angel and we get a place every time. It really works. Well, in that spot, but anyway, you are in danger when you open yourself up. And today, People wear a lot of ball caps all the time, sometimes turn backward, but they are really harming the body. The crown chakra needs to be clear for the energy to come. You don't have to wear a hat all the time, but if you at least take it off long enough to get the energy that you need from the upper, if you have a crown chakra, you have heart chakra, you have one, the solar plexus, and then you have the Kundalini, which you all know. Anyway, do you, do you know about chakras, people? Yes. Well, Anya has a chart of chakras that are going to form in your body through the transformation, and now it's happening already. And she, she, she'll give you them, but she would like for you to copy them yourselves because we, we can't pronounce them. Okay? <laughs> really, we can't. You have to carry it and you get heavy when you have thousands and thousands of papers. So, anyway, uh, I will return. I really want to explain about my mission and how it started, <coughs> what I did, what I was told to do. And it's funny at times because <laughs> I talk to the masters and I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> They say, you don't have to ask us. We're talking the tele telepathic way. You don't have to speak. And then I learn to just listen and let them guide me and tell me what I should do. And they, they will assist me. And I'm worth everything I need to do. I'm always assisted. All of my information, it's not written down. It's a it's what I know. And that's from my experiences. I'm a very old soul. This is my last physical life on earth. So I have a great mission to fulfill. When I do, then I'm, I'm ready to go. But I told you, you shouldn't have fears about anything because if, if you're afraid of diseases and stuff, you're afraid of getting sick, and you're afraid of you have phobias and thing is, what do you fear? Death is only a graduation, a transition from one form to another. And it's in your soul body, and you go directly to where you need to be according to your consciousness. You go directly there. So, and you're learning on the different dimensions all the things. This mind, this earth brain, can't comprehend. That's the only way you can study things, is leaving your body and going there. And that's your true home. Where God is, that's where you were created. So you're leaving the earth and going to your true home. That's where you should be, but it's where you can be at will. And I know everything I've experienced all my lifetimes up till now. But I don't know a lot of technology and the language that I use is out of my range. 
because I don't have a computer, I never drove a car, I didn't have a bank account, because I didn't need it. Other people had my finances for me, and they use the computer to notify people who don't know what's going on, and it's on the show. And I don't need a cell phone because I can't talk on the phone all day long. Because if I did not, I'd have a million phone calls a day. If I had my number. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I trust everybody. And I, I believe that people who love me are not going to harm me or take advantage of knowing what location is where I am. Because where I stay is my safety. It's out in the middle of nowhere in Missouri. And I chose to go there because I knew I could be safe there. <laughs> maybe they, maybe they're up there uh, traveling in other dimension right now. And they, they'll come back eventually and get it. <laughs> because they trust that you guys are going to take their phone. Not this kind of thing, right? With all spiritual people. Nobody's going to take anybody's property. That's one good thing about being here. That you are held in that and you're not afraid you're going to lose your phone or your purse. You, you shouldn't have to be a camera because if you're slow and you take your time, everything works like magic. If you hurry, everything goes wrong and you get angry and more frustrated, but you're doing it because you're not slowing down. You've got to turn it. Your soul is eternal, and that means non-ending. That means, like the figure eight, that means infinity. That's what, that's the path we're on. <laughs> Just going around and around, going through different lives and going where we need to go, coming back to Earth. You don't know what your journey is. Your journey is individual. It's not like anyone else's. Your experiences are all unique and special. Nobody experiences the same thing. If you take a walk through the woods as a person, you'll see certain things, and that's all you can see. You're pointing to them, and the other person is pointing somewhere else because they see other things. We're individuals. We can't see everything. That's why they have guided tours, so that you can focus on the things that are important and necessary. But on your walks, it's only for your pleasure. And you need to admire God, the creators, you know, all the things that he made. He's the best artist ever. There's nobody who can, can make anything the same as what nature is. And all of the animals, and you know how they got here? Do you know how the minerals, the water, the plant, animals got here? Was it seeded? No. Asteroids. No. <laughs> when, when people, human beings, they were created in another galaxy far away, and they didn't exist here, but they had huge motherships, like a whole city, from each planet, and they they got up all the people because their, their planet was being depleted and they couldn't stay there. So they were realizing this, there is a solar system. The planet's already intact. And so they all chose a different planet according to their needs and their environments that they were used to. And when they came, multitudes of these ships with enough people for every planet they came and they brought the scientists, the babies, and teachers, and, and very important necessary beings and knowledge so that the people here eventually would have access to that. And so they chose a planet. The black race chose Jupiter. And they're, they're the black race that every race known. It's like every human being, a race of being that, that has the dark or golden skin is from Jupiter. And they're known for their deep, beautiful singing voices. And they, 
They do all kinds of singing with their voices that changes the vibrations, and it's absolutely heavenly. And then we, oh, it was a bridge. Now I have to remember the, the wet line. There are 10 consoles, what we say. Anyway, um, so the, Jupiter is one planet, and then there's Mars, and that is all of the Asian people. Every, no matter what country you're from, those were your ancestors. And they chose Mars, and they're known for their technology. They're known for everything that's technical because they understand the mechanics of nature. And they know how to incorporate whatever nature has into their technology. So it's harmless. It doesn't hurt you, and you don't get addicted to it. People are addicted to electricity to your phones, to your computers. You don't do anything. You're shopping online, you're doing banking online, so you don't have to get out and mingle with people. You don't speak to people very much because you're occupied, and only your family or once in a while has a chance to see you and talk to you. But really, it's, it's harmful to your body because your body has to have a break from the energy of these, these devices because they can hurt your, your physical self because they have a certain effect on your eyes and the headphones all the time on your ears. And then you find out that you can't see as well as you don't, should and you can't hear it as well. And it's, you're doing it to yourself, like me with my exercise. <laughs> you overdo things and I don't know why human beings have a tendency to overindulge. And that's not balance. Anyway, we got Mars and we got Jupiter. Now we have uh, Saturn. Saturn is the home of the red race. The American Indians, any kind of Indians with, with skin that's got a red hue, they, are, they came from Saturn. It was their home they chose when they arrived here, and and that they were known for being in tune with nature. They they communicate with nature, and they do everything. That nature is more important than themselves, and you know that. And from cowboy movies, <laughs> and you watch the Indians, they get angry because the people are killing needlessly the buffaloes and polluting everything, and they, they get all upset because they feel as if whatever they, or they live has been taken away from them, and it was. But they are really spirits, spirits. They have spirits of nature they communicate with, and they don't take anything unless they replace it or give it at least, um, what do you call it? Uh, you, you give a gift, you give them offering, yeah, exactly, it's right word. And so they always make offerings, and many people do that on earth. The Chinese do. You know, when I eat, I eat a little bit, but what's left on my plate, I leave it. It's an offering to the starving people. Because I was taught that by the Tibetan people. And I always leave a little on my plate. And that's just a symbolic offering. And of course not gonna get it in because I can't but anyway, it's just a thought. Like blessing food. People bless food. They have their different ways of heat uh cleaning it energetically. And of course I know what they're doing, but other people don't. And they're sitting there swinging chemical pendulums over their food and, and putting things in a lot of like crystals. Well, they are aware of energy. Energy makes up everything that exists. And so then we got the red race. And then you, we go out and come to Venus. That's the home of the Aryan race. And the Aryan race, it was the, the, the light skin, white skin, blonde hair, red hair, uh, green eyed, blue eyed. Some have brown eyes according to their genetics, but they're all, they're near them. And 
many, many people here, they were your ancestors, and you remember. Somewhere in your soul, you remember. And when you see where you think you belong or someone who represents the, your ancestors, you have a deep connection. And that is explaining how the beings came to be in this universe. And then they were living for hundreds of years, and the new planet was forming, and that's Earth. And as it was forming, they watched through the succession as it got bigger and bigger and collected matter. And then when it was finished, it was like a paradise, but it didn't have any life forms. I love mountains and beautiful scenery and landscapes, but they said, we're all going to go and bring things to flourish the earth. And some chose to bring water from the water planet. So we have an abundance of water here, which we do. And we should be thankful. And I'm sure we are. But some planets have very little water. And eventually, uh, the plant, they, they built up the whole earth of animals, butterflies, minerals. They brought everything that lives here. And, and it's for your pleasure and it balances your environment. All the insects, all the animals and plants have their own frequency. And that balances to harmonizes the earth as well as making it like a paradise, like you. You know what I mean. So anyway, that's how the earth came to be with all these beautiful things that exist. And I just want to tell you that it's in my book, but at least I told you that. And I will tell you further in the book what happens to the earth, how the, it's almost destroyed, and how they had wars, people wanted to occupy the earth and control it, and other beings, reptoids, came to earth and had a war with the people here, the Atlantic people in the Miriam, they had a war with the reptiles. And it's all in my book. It's the unknown history of the universe. It's what it's called. Anya has made sure to put things in my book that my publishers would leave out so that you have all the information. If you buy our books, every one of them, you got a spiritual notebook, tells you about uh, ceremonies on Venus and how you can cleanse your house, how you can get married. The Venusian way, it even has the vows in there. Everything. I wrote everything that I knew and how we lived and how everything worked, how we felt, so that you could really experience it. So all this knowledge is available in my books. But I want to tell you about the transformation. I began that I was called by like, spiritual masters and they had told me there's going to be a transformation of the earth because we want to preserve the earth and heal it and make sure it's not destroyed. There's been so many wars on earth. They did so much damage and harmed the earth and people were harmed. It really makes me cry because I know they don't do things on purpose. They're in a primitive state of evolving. And that's what they, that's what they chose to do. Because you realize souls choose things that are absolutely horrible and horrifying because they have to have the experience. Not that they're bad, but the Creator intended each individual soul to experience every life form on every planet and every stage of human development the primitive, the rich, the beautiful, the murderers, all of them are experiencing something that is valuable for them. And once they have done that, they say, been there, done that, they don't go back and do it again because they don't need it. And they found out what they aren't. You find out by negative things what you are not. Then you find what you are. And so you can't hate people or despise people or get upset because of things that they do 
because they are not driven just to harm somebody. They, they don't remember that they chose this because when you get in this mind on earth, everything that you did as soul is forgotten by this mind and brain. It's only meaningful. It can't absorb everything and it can't study on earth and remember everything that was up there because that's soul knowledge. And you have to make a connection between the mind and soul because it won't happen until you're a seeker and you're looking and you find something that resonates to you and confirms your truths and then you know you're in the right place. And I accept all religions because all of them serve a purpose and they bring you a little higher and closer to your heart. And some of them are really restricting and controlling, but individuals, some individuals need that guidance, need to control, because they can't control themselves, because they're early in the journey. But I accept all the churches because they reach you on a certain level, and when you finish it, then you go somewhere else and find something else, because you're working, you're a secret. And we're all secrets, yeah? aren't you? Mm. And I want to give you all the information and knowledge I have. They brought me to Earth for that purpose. I was to be an extraterrestrial that you could hug and talk to and be on the same level because I'm a human. And that gives me the opportunity to communicate with you on your own level and with the same thoughts and understanding about your societies. I understand it, but I am blessed because I have total recall and I was able to remember everything that happened on there to bring back here and share with you. And that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to share the knowledge and information with you. And I have a sense of humor, so I'm not always serious. I would say, I'm not from serious, I'm delusional. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Yes. <laughs> Did you have the, the picture of us? Oh, wow. Behind you? Yeah. Did you have a wall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Anya has a picture of what's happening during this transformation to, to the earth. How it's changing. And she can explain that better than I can. But I can explain the steps I took to make people aware of the transformation and to help with the transformation by doing meditations on a certain day. When I first went to Germany, I had went to my masters and they told me, we want you to create a meditation session called Operation Peace. And I did exactly what they told me. I went back to the group and told them we're going to gather and we're going to decide what day we want to meditate. So I gave them pieces of paper that I wrote down their favorite day of the week. But I, I didn't want to do it on Sunday, on Saturday, because other religions have that day. And I wanted it on a day just for what I wanted. And so I gave everybody a piece of paper, including the children, they had children. And I said, write down your favorite day. And I brought the slips of paper to me, and I read them all, and the majority was on Wednesday, the middle of the week. So we chose Wednesday as our meditation day. And if you go and meditate when you have time and you relax, I don't care what time of day it is, you find your own way that you do it and peaceful, and you meditate for at least 30 minutes or 15 minutes. It, it depends on your own consciousness, and you find your own position, you sit comfortably, a cross leg, you know, in the regular yoga, but all of it's about it. You can lay on your back, clasp your hands over your stomach, and clasp the thumbs, and then you cross the feet. Or when you're laying down, you can lay across them. But 
you still form as a channel for the energy. And then you listen. And then you meditate. And this way, people all over the earth in different time zones are meditating on the same day. So it's continuous. It goes 24 hours. And that day is reserved for us to uh, meditate and support the transformation of our energy. And this way it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Wherever I travel to, they get me information, they got it on the computer. So all of the people can do it. And that was my job, to introduce the transformation process and operation piece. But we still do it. A lot of my people in Germany get together every Wednesday. Sometimes they eat food, laugh, enjoy each other, and they meditate together. And then they've done their part to support them transformation. So now you've got the information, right? You know how to how to join in. And it doesn't matter um, if you pray, if that's the way, the best way for you to communicate and you're used to it, you may pray. Because if that's the way that you feel that you're talking to the and asking for it's guidance and everything. Well again Absolutely, you can do that. I wouldn't tell you uh, otherwise because I don't go on to tell you what you have to do or should do. It's what you want to do, what's best for you. And too many people today, all they want to do is tell you, that's harmful, don't do that, you shouldn't do that, and you shouldn't say that word. That's insulting, it's hurting people to do that. And it's not politically correct, whatever that means. I don't care about politics. <laughs> and I don't know what politically correct means. Really. It's a word they made up, I guess. Does anybody know what it means? In reality? Or literally? <laughs> Do you know anybody? Because I want to know. <laughs> I'm going to make a hard story that is probably not. Maybe. Socially acceptable. Oh, we have a microphone for the audience. So oh, socially acceptable. Yeah. Well, well, I'm not always that way. And I don't mean insult or to harm somebody or to hurt your feelings or demand. I say to people, my kids especially, honey, would you please hand me my jacket? And I, and I didn't know I had a shirt, please. Not my children. And if they feel that I insulted them, I, I feel bad, but they don't, a lot of people don't understand me because I don't know proper English. I didn't go to school. I went started at seven and went till I was 14. And everything I've learned is from learning by doing. And if I want to know something, I get an encyclopedia, which I, I find, I get a medical journal. So I can find out different things on my own. But obviously it's because of my being in the 50s and 60s, all my terminology is outdated. <laughs> so I, I, I don't use the same expressions. We say black people. We don't mean arming you. We just, that's our term for it. And I believe that people on earth also one time. And so I, I may use the wrong terminology and I may ask you if you got an illness or something, I had surgery, and you say they removed from your toes, I may ask you, can I please know which toe it was? Because I'm curious. I'm not trying to insult them. I mean, hurt feelings. I'm just curious. Most people are, don't, are not offended. I don't mind telling them. I just curiosity because I care. And if I know what's the problem, I can help heal you by visualizing you and doing a mantra and sending you part of my energy and the creator's energy to give you support and protection. That's all I do. And I do that all the time. But I know so many people. 
I can't visualize all of it, but if I try to use your own, it's impossible. I, I know thousands of people. My family, my soul family, just keeps expanding because they keep finding me. I came to hear lots of them found me. And I'm happy because I found you too. <laughs> and I know you, and I see, all I see is beautiful souls sitting in the audience. I don't see your vision, so. I have a, a gift of being able to see that. I think that's wonderful because then I can't judge you. Now, wouldn't, but to know you as soul is knowing the pure, true self, and which is pure and perfect. The Creator made us that way. And every facet of the jewel that is you is your experiences. And there are no two alike. But if you can see it, it's overwhelming. And it makes me want to cry. And, but because you're so beautiful, and, and I know that I need you at one time or another, or in my dream state, I, I go and talk to people. The children, especially children. Children have recognized the children. And they were crying because they didn't know where. And their father would bring the child and say, I wasn't going to bring her, but I, her mother's working. And that's the father when he said, But she cries and cries and says, You know, the children where? I said, Well, bring her up here. And he brought her up there and I said, Honey, what? Do you remember me? And she said, Yes. I said, when you're asleep, you fly out of your body and you meet somewhere else. We dance and we play and enjoy ourselves on the astral. I just love all the children. And so then she was happy. She was, she felt, well, now she knows. So now she's not afraid because you're afraid of something you don't understand. And you shouldn't be afraid. You should just find out how it works and what it is, because we have, our whole life is going as planned. We have no control over it, because it's like, you know, we see a TV screen and we choose what we want to be like, what we look like, which family we need it, because of our connection to them. And so everything is planned by you before you're born. And that's why when the mother speaks to you, she talks to you, she plays it. The baby is feeling acceptance and love and support. And of course it makes a difference. And the mother is part of the child. And the father too. But the child needs attention and love from me. Because it's the only thing it needs besides food. And we must realize that some people leave the babies laying on their backs for every day and they're quite a if he cries, I said, I'm sorry to cry. I'm not a bit of that. He said, Oh my God. I, after 10 minutes, I went and sleep in the swamp. Pick up the baby, make sure it's dry. If it needs a bottle or hugs, because it's necessary. Otherwise, you damage the child. Have you ever seen children flatten out of their heads back because they lay on their back all the time? That's terrible. You're just like, you bring the baby in the world and you're ignoring it. You can't do that. Nobody wants to be ignored. Everybody wants to be accepted and loved and hugged and kissed. And that's all part of being a person because your emotions require that. Otherwise, you're not healthy. You know, then you, you're like introverted and it's hard for you to socialize with people because. It's not something that you learn from the small. And it creates problems from the older. They have phobias of going outside, phobias of the germs. All this is created by mistreatment in a bigger society. And emotionally, they're damaged. And we don't realize we're damaging them emotionally and creating trauma. If there's something that happens bad in the child's life, it's strong. Something can trigger that in them at any moment. And it can be music, it can be words, anything. So you see, it's like BSTV. It's traumatic thing because 
you know, in this tree and one way or another. And we don't mean to mistreat each other, but we have to be aware of what we're doing every moment. Be aware of everything you do. Don't just quickly do something. Just take your time, be aware of exactly what you're saying and how you're treating people. And I mean, everything. It's, not, it's okay to say hi to everybody who drive by in the car. Hey, and people do that all the time now because they realize that it's wonderful to do that, especially in a small neighborhood. You must see the most people around you because they can assist you and help you and do good things. And that is important. Anyway, I'm going to talk about the transformation. I just want to give you that information. I never know what information I give because it's based on your needs. And forgive me if I get off the track. <laughs> I don't mean it, but it's just that I have to give you that because someone's in need of it. And they answer so many questions that I have. And that's my purpose. <coughs> anyway, I'll take a little of your time. That was probably my purpose. Okay? That's all I have to know. And I'm trying to help you be the best you know, being you can be and the best person you can see for that you are. And I hope you don't no hope it gets me. I'll stay on track now, okay? You love what you're saying. Oh thank you. How very important. Yeah, well thank you. I really appreciate it. I appreciate what you told me about politically correct. Because I didn't really understand it. Because all I know about politics is what's controlling the country. And I never voted in my life because I don't want to be responsible for someone I voted for creating the habit. And, and the change between the two sides is always there. They hate the other side. They get mad at them and they won't watch them on TV. I mean, it's, for me, it's ridiculous. I'm like, my God, that's just a human being, and he's not in charge, he's just a figure. That's why I'm in charge. Anyway, I don't like to talk about politics, so I'm not going to. I'm just telling you my point of view, and I, I don't participate. Okay, but I started the meditation process. Then, after go traveling all over Europe, I was in Europe for 20 years teaching. I flew back shortly to America and back, and I, I gave all my information to Germany and Switzerland and all those places, but I didn't have time to come to America and make a tour because I had to finish what I was doing there. I even got kicked out of Germany because <laughs> I, was, I was there without a visa. I just had a passport, and I didn't even know about a visa. If you're going to stay over three months or so, you're supposed to have a visa as permission to work and stay. And I've been there 15 years. <laughs> in the hospital and they it came to me uh, I don't know what to call it the people who is in charge come to me in the hospital and said you're going to have to go back home to America I said why? he said because you, you broke the law and we have to what do you call it? I was supposed to go I was so glad I did <laughs> yeah, that's right, we were supposed to do that. We got arrested, but I was never more sure that we'd get out because the Queen of Venus was working behind the scenes. They held us for like four hours and let us go. Uh, oh, Dave, I, I was out talking to Toby. Did you start taking questions yet? Or? No, at the, I have to finish the transformation. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> we're in the midst of it right now. It, it began in 1999. My masters told me it was kickstarted it, and I was doing the groundwork to reach all the people 
because they didn't have computers with them. Not like they do today. We didn't have cell phones. I didn't have a cell phone. I don't know anything about computers because technology is not what I'm here for. I'm not giving you technical advice or training you for something or applying the spaceship. I'm only here to give you message, hug you, and talk to you, and give you the information all I can, okay? When I was, he got to Germany, I, all my friends in Germany got together and wrote a protest against throwing me out of Germany. And because they said, look, she's an author, look at all the TV shows, magazines she's in. I was in a political magazine, like the one in America. And I was, it's called the Spiegel in Germany, and it's like Time magazine. And I was in there. I was in every magazine you can imagine. TV guys had interviews and pictures of me. And the TV guys, I have such a big collection that Anya has taken all of them and put them in a, a, a book where you collect everything. A scrapbook, yeah. Anya made it of all my magazines and everything. And I have the original magazine. Everyone, every newspaper, everything about myself, so that my children can have them and other people can see them. But they're in storage and big Tupperware tubs so protected enough. And that I brought it with me, I stored and sealed everything because I want them to be aware of all the beautiful gifts that I've received from people. I want to create like a little museum, a room where everything and everybody is from, I remember. And I have crystal crystals. I have a hundred crystals. People gave them to me. I bought them. I have jewelry like this necklace. This is hematite. And it was a gift. I don't know where it came from. It looks very crazy. <laughs> it looks like something from another planet, but maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. I just found it in my jewelry. This lady, just a month ago, I found it in one of my jewelry boxes. I have so much jewelry. My daughter spent days trying to organize it, all untangle all the chains, and she put it on just for my room. She's got a, a little spin thing with all the earrings and something for all the post earrings. Like I have one on my ear and I have a little like diamonds and pearls, but not really anything. Anyway, I asked her for the pearls today because my necklace has little pearls in it. I just want it to match. So I want someday to have a little museum for myself as a gift to people because all I have is yours. And where it came from is people like you who love me. If I say I like something, to take it off and give it to me. And I said, I didn't ask you for it. I just was admiring it. But you've done that too. All right. The transformation is in process at this moment. It started in 1999 and it spread all over the world with the meditation process. And it got bigger and bigger and the group that were meditating in every country I went to. They are supporting me with meditation. In America, I'm just beginning to talk about transformation. But I know you know it, you've heard about it. But every author, every spiritual man, they've got the information and knowledge, and a lot of them put it out in books. And someone accused me of <laughs> stealing someone else's information. And I said, this is really happening. This information can't be copyrighted because the spiritual master gives this information and it's for everyone. But it may make books according to their, their, their awareness and that's okay. They were instructed too, but some of them, for you, they think they own that information. 
We don't own any of it. This information is meant to be shared with all men. And if you want to write about it, your feelings about it, I don't care who makes a book. I'm not, I don't have a copyright on life. And so transformation is happening. And I'm going to change this physically. That's part of transformation. You're, you're forming more chakras in the body to handle the higher energy. So the body only had how many uh, chakras did it have to begin with? Seven. Seven. Well, now it has 12. Because they needed different chakras for different information to come in and different energy support you through the transformation help you transform and it, it's really wonderful you have high pitched sounds in the ear that's one of, of the signals because you're hearing from the higher dimensions and, and the brother of the ships and they're communicating and the spiritual beings are communicating so they make different sounds to, to sort of alert you that something is going to happen, or you need to be aware and listen, because it could be warning that something will happen if you don't wake up and pay attention. So, you ever heard a happy sound? A yeah. humming in your ear? Yeah. See, most of the time it's because we're going through the transformation, and we advise that you drink as much water as possible because it's cleansing your system. Part of transformation is the cleansing of the body. It don't mean you have to be vegetarian. It don't mean that you have to eat a certain way. Some people are allergic to milk products, so that's okay. But otherwise, there's no restrictions on the diet. Only what you choose, choose to do. But you can't tell others how to do it. Don't eat this way. Don't tell others. Just let them move. Because it's not nice when people try to force things on you. You believe the way they believe. Because that's not proper. We have to do and be as we are. And so real time changes and no mental telepathy is forming in the brain. As one of the chakras is switching it. So the two brain halves are connected. And when that happens, you'll find that you're thinking about somebody and they call you on the phone. Have you had that happen? Or you, you need something and you're looking and somebody will tell you where it is. Because they, without you asking, because you're learning to communicate without words, which is the natural state of men before the brain was divided. It was divided on purpose to control mankind. They took the brain halves and divided it so that you couldn't remember the spiritual self. And that's the state you were in. Now it's changing and you're just returning to what you're supposed to be. And it's happening every day. But drink lots of water, focus on what you're doing, meditate, and be sure and be kind and loving to each other. And do your meditation. Thank you. Um, a number of times I was invited and other people too to go do ayahuasca, peyote, magic mushrooms with shamans and yeah. things. I resisted it, I never did it. Thank and God. you're the only one I ever heard who commented on it's okay to smoke, drink, and you know, because you like it. Even smoke marijuana. Yeah, smoke. but what I want okay. to ask you is, what's your opinion of these shamans who do uh, peri peyote and ayahuasca retreats? I just never heard anybody ever talk about it. Well, my belief is no one should ask you to take drugs as part of what they're doing for your benefit. And I, I don't think it's correct because you're taking stuff into your body that you don't know how it's going to affect you. And you could die from that. And especially if you take too much. I took peyote once 
1968 because I was a heathen. <laughs> and at least I knew that it was a mushroom. I said, well, I love mushrooms. I, my, I didn't know nothing about it, but I took some of my husband, and all it did was give me diarrhea. So my, whole, my whole trip was sitting in the toilet every night. That was not a good trip. So I don't believe that you should ingest things in your body that make you hallucinate because you need to see the reality that you're in. And if you experience things on another level, it should be gently and naturally. Or you go out of your body and have free will and experience something better than those sessions. I know that terrible. <laughs> I know it sounds like those sounds in your ear. <laughs> it's a train. So I love training. Any substance that you think is good? Uh, anything that's natural. I mean, the fail is okay, but you got to know how much your body can take. And I took too much because I'm very sensitive. And at this time, I, I never took any drugs. I tried marijuana. That was terrible because I got so outrageous that I, everything was so fascinating. And I was. I went to this woman's house and a parakeet flying around the woods. I like to say, whoa, that bird is flying around outside his cage. She said, I all this stuff. I said, I've never seen that. And really, I mean, it was outrageous how impressed I was with just that normal thing. And so I thought, no, I don't need I had insects walking home and I was making, making the Burnt in, make signals, and walking down the street, playing with it, not looking where I'm going. And then we had to buy snacks because we were hungry for sweets. And the music is all cakes and stuff. So I don't recommend that you take anything for a spiritual experience that you would just meditate, sing, or dance, do something that will release your spirit. And your soul to a higher dimension. And astral travel only limits you to the astral plane. So you want to soul and it's all in my books. Hello, like oh, Nick. And just another John who comes across the ocean. Oh, so thank like you. Like a man. Yeah, yeah. I speak uh, a fish in Deutsch. Yeah. yeah. But not so much. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> I call it baby John. <laughs> And yeah, you have a question? Yes, please. Um, you said when when we're leaving the body, or when I go when I die and I get out of this body, yeah, we're going home. What means home? Uh, Do I go back to a certain planet? I came well, before. You are taken to the astral plane first, which is closest to the physical, and you meet your relatives that passed on before you, and you have time with them. To spend and enjoy <laughs> life because you have eternity. So you spend time on the astral, and then when you're ready, your soul can go to a higher level. But you learn while you're there things that you can't comprehend with your brain, and and you're in ecstasy because you're seeing all those people that you love that you lost on Earth. But you didn't lose them; they're waiting for you, and. The Christians have a heaven too. They have on the causal plane, it's the streets of gold and the burning gates. They have with their um, uh, all the people imagining heaven and thinking of it, they created a Christian heaven on the causal. And that's where Christ was after he left. First he went to his home planet. And then it didn't teach him where he was finished. And when he rose up and everything, that was when he was then taken by his real father, who was in that time extraterrestrial. So Christ has an extraterrestrial father. And Mary Magdalene. And she didn't know he was an extraterrestrial.
extraterrestrial because they don't have any ideas at that time period of what they are. She thought it was an angel because he came down in his light and he walked out and immediately they knew they were connected. And so on Venus, when we want to have a child, we come to, we have a ceremony, and then we're coming together very slowly, and chanting, and we embrace each other, and our auras get real bright pink in their golden color, and we call a soul to join our family. And a little soul comes between the two parents, and you see the light in the right and then it goes inside the mother's womb, just like her. Because they lived on Earth before they lived there. So it emulates everything that they know on Earth there. They create things from Earth on their dimension, and they create what they want with their minds and their thoughts. But not a brain like you have, it's just a different thought system. But anyway, that answer, right? okay? <laughs> then you go to your loved ones, and then you go higher when you're ready. I choose that later on. Yeah, exactly. Sure that. Yeah, if you decide that you belong to a planet, and you're connected, then you automatically go there because it's your free will. So. I belong to another. I think that's my question. Um, because you've lived there before and it was one of the most precious uh, memories and you feel that it's your home, your true home. But every, everywhere is your true home. <laughs> everywhere you are and have been. Okay. That answer? Yes. Okay. You're welcome. Bless you. <laughs> And I had him on the kitchen table oh. using the Lamaze technique. <laughs> and they told me, I said, delivered him and said, you got a 12 pound baby. I said, what? Because <laughs> I, I, I didn't see it anymore. My husband's passed out. <laughs> he was holding on my feet. And it was too much for him. And they had to escort me to the back porch. And they were there all day. Not me delivering the baby, the doctors. And they spread newspaper all over everything. And I said, why are you doing that? They said, the newsprint is sterile. <laughs> if you have a girl who's going to get a, uh, to a clean place and a sanitized place, you can lay on, if you're bleeding, you can lay on newspaper. I didn't know that newsprint was sterile. But I found out. But anyway, so I had this big baby. And I cried and cried. The newborn diapers didn't do it. <laughs> because he looked like a five month old child. <laughs> and I, I, I propped him up in a chair when he was like three days old. And I took pictures of him sitting in the chair. And I took it real fast so he didn't fall over. But this lady that run the clinic, the Planned Parenthood clinic, uh, and they come to your house or you go to the clinic and I wanted to be home. And so she came upstairs, she's 90 years old. She's part of the clinic. And she said, I just have to see this baby. It's the biggest baby our clinic has ever, I ever birthed on her. And I said, of course you, you can see my baby. And she got the hold of me. I said, I've got a dish towel pinned on him for a diaper. <laughs> I, said, I said, I feel so bad because he's sleeping in a large uh, laundry basket because he was too big for the bassinet. <laughs> and I felt so bad because I thought my poor baby, you don't have no clothes, you don't have no diapers, and I bought all the stuff, but it was too small. And so she said, don't worry, honey, we'll find everything you need. And they brought me stuff. So they helped me. And he was the most precious baby. And he had to eat cereal when he was two days old. <laughs> Mix a little bit. Because he was in there six weeks late in the room. And, and afterward, it was calcifying and drying out. And 
He was hungry when he was born. He needed nourishment right away. And I never heard of that, but at least I, I found out that, that it can calcify. And I, I from behind, I look a normal person in front of me. I had such a belly. <laughs> that guys are twisting at me from behind me. But I say, oh, pardon me. <laughs> and I say, don't worry, it's okay. But because I'm so small, but I have, I'm double jointed, and see, I can squeeze my hand that comes together like that. And my thumb will touch my wrist, my little finger touches my wrist, because I have a different cartilage in my system. Because I, I wasn't born here the normal way, my joints fall, the fingers all bend toward the middle finger, which is like forming a flame, and that is a Venusian trait. If you have hands like a flame, it's funny, huh? And also, I have sunk in my face and my head, some bone coming in. Yeah. And it sinks in. That's a Venusian trait. If I comb my hair back, you can see it more pronounced. But anyway, it's enough. Find out when you want that Thank you. You're welcome. Um, hello. Can you come and look at my eyes? I want to see your eyes. Thank you. There you are. I feel like uh, I, when I look at people, I transmit something. Somebody actually said that today. So my question was about the Ek Masters. Mm -hmm. Do you have communication with them? And uh, all, what's their all the time? All the time. Yes. Revisar, could be Quantas, could be Quantas. Right. Robin Nuri. Robin Nuri from Venus. He's on the red exactly. side. He's, he is my spiritual teacher on Venus. He was before I came to Earth. He is uh, the Asian race from Mars. He, is my, he was my spiritual teacher on Venus. So I, we I, all communicate. I asked somebody, I told somebody that I know online, Eva, Sherry, and her husband, Dwayne, yeah. her boyfriend, or whatever. I know, and, yeah. Yeah, I asked them, I told them I was meeting you and seeing you, and they said, Dwayne said, does she communicate? And I'm like, with them, because he seemed like he didn't believe it. And I oh. said, yes. <laughs> I, so I, I appreciate it. that. I talk directly to each individual. Thank you. And I help you to get balanced, and I give you a hug, and it balances you out, and so you have a clear thinking process, and you're able to spread the light and joy to others just by gazing at them and smiling. You don't have to give them information. Thank you so much. You're welcome. For everything you do, just for being here. I think, I feel like you, I noticed Rob's reactions to you. He's very happy that you're here. Oh my God! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, him and I are old friends. Many years ago, in this life, we're kind of new friends. But he's organized for me so many times, and he treats me like a baby. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nick. I have a question about our soul plan and how does it work with our free will when we're in a physical body? Well, your free will was part of your creation by the Creator, and your soul is a little piece of, of the energy that is as God, as you know, but it's like a centrifuge that spins material at a high rate, and the more toward the center you go, the more energy. So it's just pure energy. And the outer edge is where the physical realm is and more resistance. But the free will is given to you before you take your journey down to the different levels to earth. Each level you absorb energy from and creates a body and you come down to the you finally get the emotional from after you got the your mind from mental and the causal is all being your inspirations from. And the etheric is the first crossover from God's worlds to our world. And that's 
where you receive your first, your vital intermediate deposit. Or that's where you receive body to make you prepare for her. And then when you get in the physical, you arrive first in the mental state. But you still are aware of being. And you have to be every mineral on every planet and every kind of mineral. The ones that's in water and plants and the crystals and the rocks. There's so many things. And you have to experience each individual thing before you complete the cycle of being a crystal or a mineral. And crystal serves beauty. And you can imagine what each thing serves its purpose. And then it can extend up there, collect energy and relax and return to the plant stage. And this goes on. You become an animal. Every animal, every planet in the solar system. It's a long time. But then you finally become an animal. And then same thing. You show this food and nourishment as pets. Different in the jungle and the zoo, everything you serve. And when you get into that, then you become a human. And humans are above all of this. And what happens is we are the caretakers for all the other life forms as human beings. Because what we need it for sustenance and for nourishment, everything, we need animals, we need plants, we need animals. And that's what they're here for, they're serving a purpose. So they know before they enter life that they're going to serve a purpose and then they're free to go on. So they're not suffering. They're happy that they finished and they're helping someone and they can go in and go higher in their evolution. So that's how your life starts before you're a person, your soul, and your soul all the way down. You got different bodies from energy from that dimension. You need the energy in order to survive and have body on that dimension so that you can visit those things. It's within your physical body, all of them. So that when you go up, you have a body for each one. You've got to have protection and you've got to have a body that functions with the energy. And that's how you're on Earth. Your body is energy. A collection of energy at a lower vibration. And yet now we're all human people. <laughs> and your free will is instilled in the soul because the Creator wants you to be individual and have choices. Nothing can happen to you. You have to decide what you want to. What, even on Earth, you've got to make the right decisions in your life. And if you don't, it's a lesson that you learn, but at the same time, you know, and next time, I make a better decision. Go a better way, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. I'm falling. I'm falling. <laughs> Help, I'm falling. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to autograph books. And we'll, we'll have us. Oh, that was the question. Okay. I'm going to autograph books now. Then we will be in the session. But I want to say that the news is greeting to you. You can write it down if you want to. It's a mule, A M U A L, a mule. A bot to A B A C T U. A mule, a bot to Baraka Shot. Baraka Shot is an Ekin card greeting. It says, May the blessings be in Sanskrit. And I chose that because. I form with my thought forms on Venus. It's the closest to Sanskrit than it is on any other language on Earth. Because we have thought forms. And in one of my books, it's a Venusian letter that Uncle Orthon gave to a dancer. I made copies and put it in all the books. And you get to see our language in print. It's symbols, you know. Some people have got tattoos of the symbols. But anyway. I, I want to tell you, a new Abhakti Miracle Bishat may the universal love and blessing be. Thank you. Thank you.